That's what I thought. I can see my husband and a woman in the bedroom of our house on my phone. I kept a hidden camera in our bedroom. It was clear evidence that they were having an affair. She hasn't found it out, has she? Of course not. She doesn't know anything. She isn't doubting us at all. I think I know what you mean. You do, right? Then they laughed and moved to the bed, saying that. I can see them flirting on the screen, I felt sick watching it. I was completely dumbfounded when I saw the other woman's face. It was so unexpected that the other woman was someone I know very well. I am Amy, 45 years old. I have been married for 18 years to my husband David, who is 3 years older than me. We have no children and have lived together until now. That's because I was still in my 20s when a disease was found in my womb, and it was removed. As a result, I became unable to have children for the rest of my life. I despaired of my life at the time, but my husband still chose to stay with me. Since we had no children, we had enough money to live comfortably, and we both enjoyed our lives. However, during that time, my husband underwent a major change when he was 38 years old. He suddenly developed dementia. At first, he only felt that he was more forgetful than before. It was something that happened to anyone, and I myself didn't care that much about it, but as the days went by, he began to make more mistakes even at work. He ditched important consultations and forgot requests from his boss, which was beyond the degree that could be ignored. It was my sister who reached out to me when I felt completely at a loss. She had been working in a rest home since she was in her 20s and by this time was the deputy director of the home. Thank you, sis. I'm so glad you're here. You don't have to worry about that. David is like family to me. I remember that my sister was really reliable at this time. With her help, we decided to undergo tests at the hospital she referred us to. He was diagnosed, as expected, dementia. This meant that my husband could not work as before, and he resigned from his work. I worked hard every day to make up for his income. Fortunately, we received regular help from a caregiver sent by the rest home, where my sister works. Because of that, I kept climbing the career ladder and now hold the position of section manager. Hey, Amy. How is David doing? Is there anything you're having trouble with? No, the caregiver is helping me a lot and so far so good. I'm glad to hear that, after all, he's my sister's husband and I've been worried since I introduced the caregiver. Thank you as always. Even though she was in a busy position as the deputy director of the home, she came to check on him from time to time. She was the one who worried about my husband, David, most. But I didn't realize what she was really thinking when she came to see him like this. To be honest, it was a great help to have caregivers and my sister come to my house, as it reduced my burden of caring for him. If I didn't work, neither of us would be able to survive. However, it weighed on me without being aware how exhausted I am. I became aware of this when I called out from Sarah at the hospital, we visited for a regular checkup for my husband's dementia. Are you okay, Amy? Hi, Sarah, long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while but leave it aside, have you been sleeping well lately? You look pretty tired. Yeah, I do feel tired these days, but I have to work. That may be true, but even, you only have one body, so don't overdo it. That's my advice as a nurse. I know. If you tell me something like that, then I'll have no choice but to take your advice. Oh, by the way, we've had a new doctor recently, and the doctor specializes in dementia. I think you might like consulting with that doctor. Oh, is that right? But that's not all. I'm sure you'll be surprised when you see that doctor. Oh. Look, the person talking to the patient over there. Okay, I need to get going. See you later. 
Hey. I wanted to ask her what she meant by being surprised, but she left in a hurry. But it is also true that I was worried about what I should do from now on. So I decided to take the plunge and talk to the doctor. Looking at them, the doctor seemed to be a woman. Excuse me. I was startled when I saw her looking back at me after I spoke to her nervously. It was Maria who was my classmate and a close friend of mine in high school, just like Sarah. Hey Amy. Long time no see. I couldn't believe that you were the doctor that Sarah was talking about. I was also surprised when I first heard from Sarah about your husband. You must have gone through a hard time. Yeah, but now I'm being supported by various people and managing it somehow. But don't push yourself too hard. Sarah told me the same thing. You've always tended to push it too far, Amy. While we were talking about the olden days, my husband returned after the examination. I then introduced him to Maria once again. This is my husband, David. Oh, he is. He doesn't seem to remember me much now. Nice to meet you, David. I'm Maria, a friend of Amy's from high school. When she bent down and greeted him, she seemed to frown for a brief moment. What's wrong? Do you have any concerns? No. I've seen a number of dementia patients so far. It's kind of a habit. Right. Sorry about that. I gotta go. I'm sure there's lots of advice I can give you, so come and see me anytime. Thank you, I'll do that. Then we parted ways. From then on, I would visit Maria more often when my husband got unwell or when I wanted to know what to do in the future. I think she gazed at me worriedly more often each time. I think it was about three weeks after Maria and I saw each other again. When I visited the hospital with David and waited for his examination to finish, Maria called out to me. Is your husband having the exam at the moment? Yeah. I have something I want to talk to you about, can I get you to come with me? She said that after some thought. Something you want to talk about? Yes, it's something very important to you and your husband. I had no idea what she was talking about, so I decided to listen to her with a bit of concern. Also, this was the beginning of hell for me. After that, I followed her and got into an unoccupied patient room. I'm sorry to bring you here, but there's something I really want to tell you. What on earth is that about? You know what? I could only be shocked by what she said and it seemed a little hard for her to say. She said she saw David and a woman walking together in this hospital. Just a week before she and I saw each other again apparently. She did not realize at the time that the man was my husband, but she saw him walking around very happily, and it left an impression on her. Then, when she saw David's face again when I last saw her and introduced him to her, she remembered that he was the man she saw the other day. Also, she heard the man she saw the other day was a dementia patient. That's why she made that look when she first met him. That is strange enough, but there is one more thing that bothers me. Is that? That is about his response when I last saw him, and it was a little unnatural for a patient with dementia. Unnatural? Yeah. I told you that I've seen a lot of different patients before, didn't I? Some of them lie on purpose. But why would they do that? I suppose it's more convenient for them. So, does that mean? He has the same characteristics as those patients. Besides, he didn't look like a dementia patient at all when I saw him walking the other day. So, you're saying he has been lying to me for 10 years? I hate to say this, but there's a high possibility that he's been lying since 10 years ago. If he was lying, then who was the person walking with my husband? I can't stop thinking about it. Can I ask you a few questions? If I can answer it. What did the person walking with him look like? Well. Then she walked towards the window. Then. 
Oh, she was exactly like that person. She shouted at me, and I couldn't stay still so I headed for the window. I looked under the window and saw my sister standing there. Sis. What? Your sister? Yes, that's my sister. Was it really my sister you saw? What the heck? Well, it looked too much like her. I collapsed there as my head was going to explore. Are you all right? Yeah, yes. At that moment, I didn't know what to do. You should check once to see if your husband really has dementia. This might not be my business but, I suggest you to divorce him as soon as possible. That might be true, but what am I supposed to do? If I'm correct, he is home alone while you are at work, isn't he? If that's the case. She told me the way she had previously tried with someone who, like him, may have lied about having dementia. When I heard about this, I went to pick up my husband from the exam and went back to the house for the moment. The next day, after work, I went straight to the electronics store and bought the small cameras. Then I installed them in the living room, where it was easy to see what my husband was doing, and on the spot in the bedroom, where it could be hardly seen. Since the camera was the type that could be connected to a smartphone, I could see what was going on inside the house from the outside. When I checked the footage from the cameras during breaks at work or other times, I could see my husband, who didn't seem to have dementia. He was spending his time as usual, without any indication of confusion, even though he was so forgetful that he even lost track of where he had put things. When I checked more of the footage, it revealed that my sister was visiting him very frequently. I'm pretty sure she was supposed to contact me before she visited him. But she has been visiting him on days when I have not been contacted. Not only that, their conversations were recorded in the footage. Amy doesn't know anything, does she? Of course not, I'm pretending to have dementia as you told me too. That's good then. But it's been 10 years. It's hard to believe she hasn't noticed anything. I was very nervous in the beginning, but I don't even feel like she's gonna find it out anyway. Even though she's my own sister, it makes me sad. The caregiver would notice that though, don't you think? No, she is fine. That person is tight on money, so I put in a good word for her and raised her wage a bit. So she won't say anything. Okay. I don't have to worry about it then. The two of them laughed and headed to bed. The subsequent footage showed the two of them flirting in bed. I felt sick watching it. From the moment I heard Maria's story I had a bad feeling about it, but part of me was trying to escape reality by thinking that it wasn't true. When I faced reality like this, I couldn't think of anything. After a while of being in a daze and not thinking about anything, I could feel a hatred towards these two welling up within me. I think I acted quickly from that point on. I got proof of the affair anyway, but I wanted to know why he decided to lie about having dementia. I first went to see the caregiver who was in charge of assisting my husband. I visited her apartment and showed her the video evidence of the affair. Then, she was extremely apologetic about it, as she probably thought she could no longer hide the truth. I'm really sorry. You don't need to apologize so much. I'm not trying to do anything to you. Afterwards, she continued to regret and blamed herself for having no choice but to say yes to my sister. Certainly, she still had a hand in their affair. But she might have been afraid of being fired if she refused, which was the worst case scenario. I'm not gonna give her further pressure. She was also a victim of my greedy husband and sister. After hearing her verbal evidence, I next contacted a certain person. The person was my husband's boss. I had invited him to my house before. We had exchanged contact details at that time and I thought I could talk to him. Then I happened to know that my husband had trouble at work before he was diagnosed with dementia. After that, 
I was able to obtain various verbal evidence which led me to consult a lawyer and end up getting in the middle of a secret meeting between my husband and my sister. On the day, I lied and said I was going to work as usual and met up with the lawyer. I then waited for my sister to arrive. I confirmed with the video that they were heading to the bedroom as usual, and then stormed into the scene. The two were unable to escape and were flabbergasted at what had happened. How dare you've been lying to me all up until now, David. I heard you made a pretty big mistake at work. Your boss told me about it. How did you? I heard it directly from your boss, obviously. I can't believe you did this because of that? Well, that can't be true. I've also talked to your friend. It seems that you were relying on my money. And I can't believe you're cheating on me with my sister. Wait a minute. I apologize for lying, but she seduced me. I rejected her at first. Even if that's true, you accepted it in the end. It's too late to make excuses now. Then, my sister, who had remained silent until then, opened her mouth. She seemed quite nervous. Hang on a minute. You are the one who first asked me how to get Amy to support me. Don't blame others. After that, the two of them continued to curse at each other. I couldn't stand this farce forever, so I interrupted their conversation. That's enough. I don't have time for any more of this bullshit between you two. I no longer could stand this situation where two of them were here. Oh, I forgot to mention that I'm having a lawyer look at what's going on. David and my sister said, are you kidding me? Didn't you notice? We're on a video call right now. Just wait. Okay, Amy, chill out and talk. I don't have anything more to say to you too. Get out of here right now. Then I chucked their clothes out of the window. I kicked them out of the front door and locked the door. They kept ringing the doorbell or banging on the door, but they quieted down after telling them to call the police if they carry on. Over the next few days, they came to my house, but I ignored all of them. They were so persistent that I decided to put the house on the market. As soon as my husband was diagnosed with dementia, the ownership of the house changed to me. Fortunately, the current house was close to the train station and I would soon find a buyer, apparently. After that, I told Maria about what's happened so far and decided to stay at her house temporarily. It was tough, wasn't it? I can't believe that my friend's husband was lying. Yes, but I wouldn't have known about this without you. Thank you, Maria. I didn't do anything. You don't need to thank me, Amy. It's usual to help friends anyway. So, what are you going to do from now on? I'm thinking of finding a new apartment and settling down there. Oh? What about the house you're living in now? Oh, I've already put it up for sale. Have you? Are you happy with that? I don't mind. Now my husband has no place to go back to and he can do whatever he wants afterwards. Then I was able to divorce my husband. Of course, I demanded compensation for his affair with my sister and for deceiving me for 10 years. Obviously, this is revenge. It doesn't matter if my husband is capable of paying or not. There is more to it though. My ex-husband, who divorced me, is apparently living with my sister. My sister had just divorced a few years ago, so it was good in a sense. However, their happy life ended soon. My sister has always liked exciting things since she was a child. With her personality, she might have enjoyed the situation of adultery, where it could be exposed at any time. Now that I think about it, my husband was probably a victim of my sister. However, that doesn't mean I forgive him. Besides, even if my husband did leave her, there would be no place for him to return now that the house was sold. He has no parents to rely on and nowhere to run away. Despite all this, only the compensation money remains. 
I don't feel sorry for them of course, because they asked for it. Rather, I really don't care what happens to the two of them in the future, but they wasted a valuable 10 years of my life. The only thing I'm grateful to my ex-husband for is that I was able to get promoted and have enough money to live without inconvenience. Enough to live on my own. After that, I now have a cat. He is my new partner from now on. Also Maria, who stays single, visits me frequently at my new apartment. From now on, we can enjoy our lives as women together, I suppose. What did you think of this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.